This is your Budapest TV. How could you miss TV? Slay media TV and this sport and dream street in the zone and up a news in the car one run name of UZ. Slay media TV man they change the angma dreams. Slay yeah yeah slay media. Slay yeah yeah slay media. First of all, I would like to thank you, members of the media, for coming to our press uh, conference. And without wasting much of the time, I'll go straight into the issues that we have asked you to come and hear. On the 21st of January 2022, a split of the movement for democratic change, Sangirai Bukhet. This was as a result of constitutional transgressions. Douglas Monzora has for times without number violated the constitution of the party. Whereas Article 9.1.2a enjoins the president to uphold and defend the party's constitution. It therefore follows that the president cannot be at the center of constitutional transgressions. At the same time, Douglas Monzora declared that he is now leader of MDC Alliance Party. This is evidence that now we have two parties. MDCT and MDC Alliance Party, hence the split. It was in this vein that I then wrote letters to the Speaker of Parliament and the Minister of Justice on the 24th of January 2022, informing them, informing both institutions that the MDCT Party had split into two formations. One led by Dr. Tozan Kupi, who is also the leader of the opposition in the National Assembly, and one led by Douglas Monzora, leader of the opposition in the Senate, and president of the MTC Alliance Party. I appealed to the Speaker of Parliament and the, Minister of and the Minister of Justice in Legal and Parliamentary Affairs to treat both formations equally and exercise impartiality. However, to my surprise, on the 26th of January, 2022, I received a letter from the Speaker of Parliament through a courier, FedEx, which was delivered to my house in Wulawai, together with my colleague, Nomvulamvun, to the effect that we had been recalled and we were no longer members of Parliament. I have never heard in the history of Parliament a member being recalled through a letter sent to their home by FedEx at a time when Parliament is not in session. Parliament will be, will be resuming in a fortnight, and you shudder to think why the Speaker of Parliament was in such a hurry to recall me and my colleague through a letter he wrote while sitting in his office and sending it through FedEx. That is unprocedural. My understanding of parliamentary operations is that the speaker derives his powers from the mace when he is sitting on his chair in the House of Assembly, in the presence of sitting members of parliament, because the mace is the symbol of authority of the House and the speaker of parliament. Without the mace, the House cannot sit and it cannot make laws. On the 24th of January, 2022, the speaker of parliament received two letters, one from my party and the other from Monzora's party. He then decided to ignore my party's letter and took immediate action on Monzora's party's letter, of which he subsequently wrote recall letters to us. My letter was reconciliatory because I was pleading with the Speaker of Parliament to exercise impartiality and treat the two parties fairly Whereas Monzora's letter was vindictive because he was asking the Speaker of Parliament to recall Honorable Nomvulamkuni and myself. Douglas Monzora is now president of MDC Alliance Party. Whereas Honorable Nkuni and myself are members of MDC Tea Party. It boggles the mind how a leader of another political party can recall members of another party. For example, MDC Tea Party cannot recall members of PDP, neither can they recall members of ZANU-PF. To make matters worse, the Speaker of Parliament in the recall letter said, I quote, I must advise that on the 24th of January 2022, I received a notice of recall in terms of Section 
1K of this constitution. Accordingly, I must advise that by virtue of section 129 1K of the constitution, you have ceased to be a member of the National Assembly. And my question is, which party, because the speaker did not mention the name of the party, which gave these notices? Previously, there are members of parliament who were recalled because they were accused of being members of MDC Alliance. On the, on the, on the contrary, Monzora made a public announcement to the effect that he was now, he had now formed a new party that is contesting in the upcoming by-elections in March under the MDC Alliance banner. Whereas this is the reason why other MPs were recalled, it was precisely because they belonged to MDC Alliance and not MDC team. Hence the reason why he has expelled himself from the party in terms of the MDCT constitution, Article 5.10.8. Therefore, Douglas Monzora has no local stand of recalling a member of MDCT because he is now a member and the leader of MDC Alliance Party. This clearly demonstrates the bias, impartiality, and inconsistency by the Speaker of Parliament. Splits in the movement for democratic change are not a new phenomenon. The first split happened in 2005 between Gibson Spander, the late Gibson Spander, Vice President, and the late Morgan Sangirai, President. Parliament recognized and respected both formations and accepted the status quo. Both formations were allowed to, to coexist and they coexisted until the end of their term of office in 2008. This is where my issue of victimization and discrimination is derived from. The two men split in 2005. They were allowed to coexist by this same institution. A woman and a man have split in 2022. That is Tawazani Kupe and Douglas Monzo. The Speaker of Parliament decides to favor Douglas Monzora over me without even considering calling both parties to the table for a discussion. Truly speaking, this is glaring evidence of inequality, discrimination, and victimization. There is no provision in the standing rules and orders where the Speaker of Parliament is supposed to supervise political parties and adjudicate where there are disputes. The Speaker of Parliament in this instance received two letters on the same day and almost at the same time. But alas, he decided on which formation was legitimate. I wonder where he got those powers from. The Speaker of Parliament knew very well that Monzora had declared that he was now leader of the MDC Alliance Party and that he was going to participate in the by-elections under the MDC Alliance Party. There is evidence for all to see because his candidates for the March 26, 2022 by-elections have registered under MTC Alliance Party. This is the same party whose MPs were recalled from Parliament because they had ceased to be members of MTCT. The Speaker of Parliament, in his wisdom, disregarded that and decided to take sides with another man. As a woman, I strongly feel victimized and discriminated against at the highest level. As if that was not enough, the Minister of Justice equally decided that the political party's uh, grant will go to Monzora. Again, I wonder where the Minister of Justice derives his powers from to decide on which formation is legitimate. As I also wrote a letter to him advising him on the new developments in the party and pleaded with him to treat both formations in a fair and just manner. In 2014, the MDCT split again. And this time it was between the late Morgan Sangrai and Tenda, the late Morgan Sangrai, the president, and Tendai Beat, the secretary general. Political parties' funds were split between the two formations. In 2022, the same MDCT party has split between Togozani Kupe, deputy president, and Douglas Monzora president. But the sad reality is that the Minister of Justice wants to give the full amount to Monzora, and one shudders to think why. When it was Morgan Sangrai and Tendai Biti, the money was divided into two. 
But this time around, because it is Chogozan Kupe, a woman, and Monzora, a man, the Minister of Justice wants to give the full amount to Monzora. Surely, what can one call this other than seeing it as unjustified inequality and unfair practice? In these two instances, I have been discriminated against because I am a woman. It is very clear that when it comes to my case, there is selective application of rules and regulations. When it was Morgan Sangrai and Gibson's band, they were both respected and treated with impartiality. Again, when it was Tendai Biti and Morgan Sangrai, they were respected and treated with impartiality. This time around, it is Togozani Kupe and Douglas Monzora, and both the Speaker of Parliament and the Minister of Justice have decided to side with the other men, Monzora, for no apparent reason. In my view, these institutions, namely the executive and the legislature, are not exercising impartiality and are colluding against me with regards to this matter. As, a, as women in the political arena in this country, we have been victimized and discriminated, and discriminated against for times without number. And time has come for women to rise and say this far and no further. Our voices are being silenced and we are being disempowered. I met with women's organizations to tell them our story of victimization and discrimination just because of our gender. I am being suffocated and I can't breathe. At the same time, I have written to the United Nations Secretary General, H.E. Antonio Guterres, the United Nations Executive Director, Dr. Sima Sami Bahos, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, H.E. Michelle Bachelet, the Interparliamentary Union President, Honorable Duarte Pacheto, the Pan African Parliament, and Madam Benita Diop, the Special Envoy of the Chairperson of the African Union Commission on Women, Peace, and Security, so that they see the amount of victimization and discrimination against women by the executive and by the legislature. I am therefore calling upon the executive to stop discrimination against women. And in the same token, I am calling upon the legislature to stop discrimination against women. I am saying this with a heart which is bleeding because I am a victim of discrimination by these pillars of the state. Women and men must be treated with dignity, respect, and equally because we are equal in the eyes of the Lord and we must therefore be equal in the eyes of the law. I would like to conclude by calling on women's organizations and women at large to rise and fight with me this deadly pandemic called victimization and discrimination against women. I am going to fight to the finish and I'm going to fight a discrimination against women in politics with the last drop of my tears, I'm going to fight discrimination against women with the last drop of my sweat. I'm going to fight discrimination against women with the last drop of my blood. Not just for myself, but for young women who should not be intimidated, but be inspired to commit without shame in the politics of, in the politics of this country and help shape their destinies. I raise my case. <clears throat> This is your Uba TV, Hakudi Masifi, Slay Media TV, and this sport and dream was sitting as a one and up a news in Daka one run name of Yuzi, Slay Media TV, Mandi change your Angma dreams. Slay, yeah, yeah, Slay Media, 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 who change your vision, you might get to use, who change your life, you might get to use. Tipanzira, se ma ghetto youth Kutipa, guarara, manguana, rakanaka Slay, yao ya, slay media